In this video, we revisit how to normalise a database to third normal form by stepping through another worked example. So this video provides you with additional examples of how to do database normalisation to third normal form. It assumes you've already watched and are relatively comfortable with the content of our video on normalisation to 3NF. If you've not seen it yet, we strongly suggest you watch that video first and then come back here. OK, so let's have a look at the situation we've got here. We've got a table which contains multiple choice questions. Each one has a correct answer and each one also has three incorrect answers. The table is also storing question topic, the question difficulty, whether the answer is a correct answer or not, and the number of marks available. So let's try and normalise this table to third normal form. So let's step through the rules. To get to first normal form, all field names must be unique. Well, the name of all fields are already unique, so rule one is met. OK, rule two the value in fields should be from the same domain. Well, the values in each field are of the same type already, so rule two has been met. Rule three, values in fields should be atomic. Well, the values in the answer field are not always atomic. We're actually storing more than one answer here. So we found our first rule that's been violated. We've now made the answer field fully atomic. Now, in doing so, we've increased data redundancy, but we've satisfied rule three. Rule four, no two records can be identical. Well, no two rule, uh, records are identical, so we've met rule four. And rule five, each table needs a primary key. So we've made a composite primary key here out of the topic field plus the question field plus the answer field. As we know, for any combination of topic, question and answer, this will be unique. We'll attempt to improve the situation as we further normalise the table. But for now, we've met our rules and our tables in first normal form. To get to second normal form, the table should already be in first normal form, which it is, and any partial dependencies need to be removed. So let's have a look. The question field is only dependent on the topic field. So it's partially dependent. We found a partial dependency. The difficulty field is only dependent on the question field. We found a second partial dependency. And the correct marks fields are only dependent on the answer field. So we found three partial dependencies. We've moved the topic field into its own table and added a primary key topic ID. The question table only has the questions and difficulty fields remaining. We've added the primary key question ID, thus removing our previous composite key, and we've added topic ID as a foreign key so it can link back to the topic table. We've put the answer, correct and mark fields into their own table and added a primary key answer ID. We've also added question ID as a foreign key link back to the question table. You can see us building up our entity relationship diagram in the bottom right hand corner. So currently we're saying that one topic can have many questions and one question can have many answers. Now to get to third normal form, we check the data is already in second normal form, which it is, and we make sure any transitive dependencies have been removed. Well, the mark field is dependent on the correct field, i.e. the mark is dependent on the answer being correct or not. So if we leave it like this, we're actually susceptible to becoming inconsistent. An incorrect answer should never be worth a mark. This is a transitive dependency. Remember, to be in third normal form, all fields must be dependent on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. 
Well, the key in this table is answer ID, but mark is dependent on the correct field. So we've moved the correct field into its own table and added the primary um, key mark ID, which we've also added as a foreign key in the answer table to link it back. Our table is now in third normal form. If we look at the entity relationship diagram in the bottom right, we can see that one topic has many questions and one question has many answers. We can also see that a mark can be applied to many answers. Here's what our final normalized database looks like. We've marked up the primary and foreign keys and we've just enlarged the entity relationship diagram on the right showing the relationships. You'll also notice throughout these um, examples, we've also been using a text-based way of representing our database. And that's been shown at the top there. The table name is in capitals, followed by the list of fields for that table in brackets, so for by commas, and any fields which make up the primary key have been underlined. And this is typical of what you'll see in the exam.